power means that you get not only to decide on the basis of price, but also on the basis of what's happened in the production of phase. And the evidence is that the wealthier we become, the more we do that. In, in, in countries where there is uh, a very low GDP per head, nobody can afford to be fussy about battery chickens or whatever. Uh, but when you get to a certain level of wealth, consumers begin to demand things. Governments don't need to decree it. You don't need to pass laws because uh, people uh, insist on, on high standards anyway. And I think this is a really important point. But so many, so much of the debate is framed around the idea that there is a necessary conflict between growth and the natural world or animal rights or workers' rights or whatever it is. But actually wealth, you know, people getting above subsistence level tends to be the answer to almost all of those things. Uh, if I, you know, I, I drink cleaner water and breathe cleaner air in London than in Lahore because of the level of GDP per head. Lahore will catch up when people get rich. The best thing we can do for the environment here is to make people richer so that they can, they can afford to make those choices. It was Karl Marx who taught that nature was a resource to be exploited, mm -hmm. a doctrine that found brutal realization mm -hmm. in the smokestack industries of the Soviet bloc. Uh, Soviet communism turned the Aral Sea into a desert, uh, turned the Volga into a sewer. Uh, turned Lake Baikal into such an oil slick that passengers on ferries weren't allowed to throw cigarettes overboard. Mm. Uh, when the Berlin Wall came down, ownership spread. And uh, Aristotle's wisdom holds true, that which nobody owns, nobody will care for. When you have more ownership, you have people invested in renewable growth. I have a, a colleague in the, in the UK House of Lords, uh, Lord Ridley, he's a, a science writer, Matt Ridley, and he has a lovely way of expressing this. He says, 50 years ago, lions and tigers and wolves were all endangered. What has happened since? Wolves are now everywhere, tigers have flatlined, lions are still endangered. Why? Because wolves live in rich countries, tigers live in middle-income countries, and lions live in poor countries. So the best thing we can do for the environment is to raise GDP per head. And one of the ways we can do that is to pull down barriers and encourage people to trade. Wonderful. That's really good to hear. And that's, again, a good sense of empirical data.